ओम साई राम चैप्टर टेन साई बाबाज मोड ऑफ लाइफ हिस् स्लीपिंग प्लैंक हिस् स्टे इन शिरडी हिस् टीचिंग्स हिस् ह्यूमिलिटी नानावली द ईजिएस्ट पाथ रिमेंबर हिम साई बाबा ऑलवेज विद लव फॉर ही वॉज एवर एनग्रॉस्ड इन डूइंग गुड टू ऑल एंड ऑलवेज अबाइडेड इन हिज सेल्फ To remember him only is to solve the riddle of life and death. This is the best and easiest of sadhanas as it involves no expenditure. A little exertion here brings great rewards. So, as long as our senses are sound, we should minute by minute practice this sadhana. All other gods are illusory. Guru is the only god. If we believe in Sadhguru's holy feet he can change our fortune for the better If we serve him sincerely we get rid of our worldly afflictions we need not study any philosophy like the nyaya and the nimansa As we trust the helmsman in crossing rivers and seas so we have to trust our sadguru in getting over the ocean of worldly existence the sadguru looks to the intense feeling and devotion of his devotees endows them with knowledge and eternal bliss in the last chapter baba's mendicancy and devotees experiences and other subjects are dealt with let the readers now read where and how baba lived how he slept and how he taught etc baba's wonderful bedstead let us first see where and how baba slept mr nana sahib bengle brought for sai baba a wooden plank about 4 arms in length and only a span in breadth for sleeping upon instead of keeping the plank on the floor and then sleeping on it Baba tried it like a swing to the rafters of the masjid with old shreds or rags and commenced to sleep upon it. The rags were so thin and worn out that it was a wonder how they could bear or support the weight of the plank itself, let alone the weight of Baba. Baba somehow or rather it was Baba's sheer leela that the worn out rags did sustain the plank along with the weight of Baba on it. On the four corners of this plank Baba lighted padakis earthen lamps one at each corner and kept them burning the whole night it was a sight for the gods to see baba sitting or sleeping on this plank it was a wonder to all how baba got up and down the plank out of curiosity many observers kept watching the process of mounting and dismounting but none succeeded As crowds began to swell so as to detect this wonderful feat Baba one day broke the plank into pieces and threw it away Baba had all the eight mahasiddhis powers at his command he neither practiced nor craved for them they came to him naturally as a result of his spiritual perfection manifestation of brahma though sai baba looked like a man Three cubits and a half in length. Still, he dwelt in the hearts of all. Inwardly, he was unattached and indifferent, but outwardly, he longed for mass welfare. Though inwardly an abode of peace, he looked outwardly restless. Inwardly, he had the state of Brahma. Outwardly, he seemed engrossed in the world. Sometimes he looked on all with affection and at times he threw stones at them sometimes he scolded them while at times he embraced them and was calm composed tolerant and well balanced he always abided and was engrossed in the self and was self disposed towards his bhaktas he always sat on one asan and never traveled Satka was a small stick which he always carried in his hand. He was calm and thought free. He never cared for wealth and fame and lived on alms. Such a life he led. He always uttered 
Allah Malik God is the real owner entire and unbroken was his love for the bhaktas he was the mine or storehouse for self knowledge and full of divine bliss such was the divine form of sai baba boundless endless and undifferentiated one principle which envelops the whole universe incarnated in sai baba the really meritorious and fortunate people got this treasure grove in their hands while those people who not knowing the real worth of sai baba took him to be a mere human being were indeed unfortunate his stay in shirdi and probable birth date none knew or knows the parents and the exact date of birth of sai baba but it can be approximately determined by his stay in shirdi baba first came to shirdi when he was a young lad of 16 and stayed there for 3 years then all of a sudden he disappeared for some time After some time he reappeared in the Nizam state near Aurangabad and came to Shirdi again with the marriage party of Chandpatal when he was about 20 years old then he stayed in Shirdi for an unbroken period of 60 years after which baba took his mahasamadhi in the year 1918 from this we can say that The year of Baba's birth is approximately 1838 AD. Baba's mission and advice. King Ramdas flourished in the 17th century and fulfilled to a great extent his mission of protecting cows and brahmins against the Yavanas, Muhammadans. But within 2 centuries after him, the split between the two communities the hindus and muhammadans widened up and sai baba came to bridge that gulf his constant advice to all was to this effect ram the god of the hindus and rahim the god of the muhammadans were one and the same there was not the slightest difference between them then why should their devotees fall out and quarrel among themselves you ignorant folk join hands and bring both the communities together as the same lead and thus you will gain your object of national unity it is not good to dispute and argue so don't argue don't emulate others always consider your interest and welfare the lord will protect you yoga sacrifice penance and knowledge are the means to attain god If you do not succeed in this by any means in vain is your birth if anyone does any evil unto you do not retaliate if you can do anything do some good unto others this in short was sai baba's advice to all and this will stand us in good stead both in material and spiritual matters sai baba as sadguru There are many so-called gurus who go about from house to house with symbols and veena in their hands and make a show of their spirituality. They blow mantras into the ears of their disciples and extract money from them. They profess to teach piety and religion to their disciples but are themselves impious and irreligious. Sai Baba never thought of making the least show of his work. he had no body consciousness but he had great love for his disciples there are two kinds of gurus niyat appointed or fixed and aniyat unappointed or general the latter by their advice develop the good qualities in us purify our hearts and set us on the path of salvation but contact with the former dispels our sense of duality sense of difference and establishes us in unity by making us realize do art that there are various gurus imparting to us various kinds of worldly knowledge but he who fixes us in our nature self and carries us beyond the ocean of worldly existence is the sadguru sai baba was such a sadguru his greatness is indescribable 
if anybody went to take his darshan he without being asked would give every detail of his past present and future he saw divinity in all beings friends and foes were alike to him this interested and balanced he obliged the evil doers as well as the pious he was the same in prosperity and adversity no doubt ever touched him though he acted through the body he was not in the least attached to his body or house though he looked embodied he was really unembodied that is free from gross existence blessed are the people of shirdi who worship sai as their god while eating drinking working in their backyards and fields and doing various household works they always remembered sai and sang his glory they knew no other god except sai what to speak of the sweetness of the love of the women of shirdi they were quiet ignorant but their pure love inspired them to compose poems or songs in their simple rustic language letters of learning they had none still one can discern real poetry in their simple songs it is not intelligence but love that inspires real poetry as such real poetry is the manifestation of true love and this can be seen and appreciated by intelligent listeners collection of these folk songs is desirable and by baba's wish some fortunate devotee may undertake the task of compiling and publishing these folk songs either in the sai lila magazine or separately in a book baba's humility lord or bhagwan is said to have six qualities like fame wealth non attachment knowledge grandeur and liberality baba had all these in him he incarnated in flesh for the sake of bhaktas wonderful was his grace and kindness for he drew the devotees to him or how else could one have known him for the sake of his bhaktas baba spoke such words the goddess of speech could not utter here is a specimen baba spoke very humbly as follows slave of slaves i am your debtor i am satisfied at your darshan it is a great favor that i saw your feet i am an insect in your excreta i consider myself blessed thereby what humility is this though outwardly baba seemed to enjoy sense objects he had not the least flavor in them nor even the consciousness of enjoying them though he ate he had no taste and though he saw he never felt any interest in what he saw regarding passion he was as perfect a celibate as hanuman he was not attached to anything he was pure consciousness the resting place of desire anger envy and other feelings in short he was disinterested free and perfect a striking instance may be cited in illustration of this statement nanavali there was in shirdi a very quaint and pure fellow by name nanavali he looked to baba's work and affairs he once approached baba who was seated on his gaddi seat and asked him to get up as he wanted to occupy the same baba at once got up and left the seat which he had occupied after sitting there a while nanavali got up and asked baba to resume his seat then baba sat down and nanavali fell at his feet baba did not show the slightest displeasure in being dictated to or ousted this nanavali loved baba so much that he breathed his last on the 13th day of baba's mahasamadhi the easiest path hearing the stories of the saints and being in their company though sai baba acted outwardly like an ordinary man 
His actions show extraordinary wisdom and skill. Whatever he did was done for the good of his devotees. He never prescribed any asana, regulation of breathing or any rites to his bhaktas. Nor did he blow any mantra into their ears. He told them to leave off all cleverness and always remember Sai Sai. If you did that, he said all your shackles would be removed and you would be free. Sitting through five fires, sacrifices, chantings, eightfold yoga are possible for the Brahmins only. They are of no use to the other classes. The function of the mind is to think. It cannot remain without thinking for a minute. If you give it a sense object, it will think about it. If you give it to Guru, it will think about Guru. You have heard most attentively the grandeur of Sai. This is the natural remembrance of Sai. Hearing the stories of the saints is not so difficult as the other sadhanas mentioned above. They, stories, remove all fear of this sansar and take you on to the spiritual path. So listen to these stories Meditate on them and assimilate them. You may attend to your worldly duties but give your mind to Sai and his stories and then he is sure to bless you. This is the easiest path but why do not all take to it? The reason is that without God's grace we do not get the desire to listen to the stories of the saints. With God's grace, everything is smooth and easy. Hearing the stories of the saints is, in a way, keeping their company. The importance of the company of the saints is very great. It removes our body consciousness and egoism, destroys completely the chain of our birth and death, cuts asunder all the knots of the mind and takes us to God, who is pure consciousness. It certainly increases our non-attachment to sense objects and makes us quite indifferent to pleasures and pains and leads us onward on the spiritual path. If you have no other sadhana such as uttering God's name, worship or devotion etc. but if you take refuge in them wholeheartedly they will carry you off safely across the ocean of worldly existence. It is for this reason that the saints manifest themselves in this world. Even sacred rivers such as the Ganges, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri, which wash away the sins of the world, desire that the saints should come to them for a bath and purify them. Such is the grandeur of the saint. It is on account of the store of merit in past births that we have attained the feet of Sai Baba. We conclude this chapter with meditation on Sai's form. He, the graceful and handsome Sai, standing on the edge of the masjid and distributing Uddi to each and every bhakta with the view to his welfare, he who thinks of the world as an illusion and who is ever engrossed in supreme bliss. Before him, we humbly prostrate ourselves. Bow to Shri Sai. Peace be to all.